After struggling during the first few months of the season, NBA fans were quick to hate on Grady Dick. Up until mid-January, Grady was averaging just 3 points on terrible efficiency, making him an inconsistent part of the rotation. Even when he got sent down to the G League, he struggled with his shooting against weaker competition. Considering there were several players taken after Grady that were making an impact as rookies, some people thought that the Raptors had made a mistake by drafting him. However, in Toronto's last 14 games before the All-Star break, Grady turned things around and looked much better. With the team committing to a youth movement, Grady will continue to receive more opportunities, and I expect him to take advantage of them. In today's video, I'm going to explain how Grady Dick turned his season around, and why Raptors fans should be excited about his potential. Before we get into it, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the season, and your support goes a long way. With all that being said, let's get into the video. Ahead of the draft, teams were interested in Grady Dick's shooting ability. In his one year at Kansas, Grady shot 40% from three on nearly six attempts per game. On top of that, scouts felt that his 6'8 frame gave him more potential. He was projected to go in the lottery, and sure enough, the Raptors took him 13th overall. With Scotty Barnes being the future of the franchise, it made sense to draft a young three-point specialist to complement him. Unfortunately, Grady's shot was not falling over the first few months of the season. As I highlighted, he was shooting just 28% from the field and 23% from three until mid-January, and that concerned some people. Those struggles continued in the G League, as in 11 appearances he averaged 14.8 points on poor efficiency. While Toronto drafted Grady with the idea that he was more than just an outside shooter, that was by far his biggest strength. Without the threat of a three-point shot, it was hard for the Raptors to justify playing him. With that being said, there was a narrative starting to circulate that Grady was the wrong pick, but to me that was unfair. Grady just turned 20 years old this past November, so he was going to need time to develop. A lot of people pointed to the fact that Jordan Hawkins was selected directly after Grady, and he was shooting the ball very well right out of the gates. While Hawkins did start his career strong, it's important to realize that not every player develops at the same rate. As a shooter, it can be a difficult transition into the NBA because the game is so much faster. In the NBA, an open shot isn't necessarily open because defenders have the size, speed, and length to close out on you in the blink of an eye. On top of that, defensive schemes are different in the NBA than they are in college. In interviews, Grady also mentioned that the distance of the NBA three-point line was an adjustment for him, and he needed to put the reps in to feel comfortable on those shots. These things take time to get used to, and they become harder when you have a reputation as a shooter. Grady Dick was viewed as a sniper coming into the league, so he had to deal with those expectations while adapting to the NBA game at the same time. This makes the weight of each shot so much greater, because the more shots you miss, the more people you'll have calling you a disappointment, like many were quick to do. You might be saying, it's reasonable that he struggled in the NBA, but at the very least, a lottery pick should be able to find success in the G League. While he was extremely inconsistent in the G League, it's important to note that the Raptors 905 have been awful this season. They have one of the worst records in the G League, and across all competitions, they've had 17 double-digit losses. A losing environment like this can be tough for anyone to succeed in, especially a young rookie trying to find their way in the NBA. While Grady struggled for the first few months of the season, the law of averages suggested that he'd pick things up at some point. Over the past month, Grady has done just that, and it speaks to his level-headedness in the face of adversity. In recent interviews, Grady has mentioned how valuable his coaches and vets have been. He said that they emphasized how many ups and downs there will be in a season, and that whenever he was going through a down period, he should come and talk to them. Grady admitted that he did just that during his struggles, mentioning Garrett Temple by name. By having an open dialogue with members of the team, Grady was able to keep his head high after a tough start to the year. This speaks to Grady's maturity, because many young people view vulnerability as a sign of weakness. His willingness to be open is a good trait to have, and I'm confident he'll keep using it to his benefit going forward. The difference between Grady's play at the start of the season compared to now is night and day, and if you look at his stats, there's one thing that immediately jumps out. After shooting poorly from the field early on, Grady shot the ball extremely well heading into the All-Star break. 50% from the field and 46% from three is great for any player, let alone a rookie. While his improved percentages stand out more than anything, it's his development as an all-around player that has me most excited. As a scorer, Grady is more than just a spot-up shooter. 
One of the main things you'll notice when watching him is how well he moves without the ball. He runs hard off screens on set plays, and he's effective in handoff actions as well. He also has great awareness to make backdoor cuts when the defense overplays him. Grady's movement makes lazy defenses pay, and this occurs in transition too. Grady is quick to run down the floor off a missed shot or turnover and get an easy bucket. On this play, Herb Jones tries to signal to his teammates that Grady needs to be picked up, but no one pays attention and it results in an open three. By running hard in transition, Grady could take advantage of poor communication and effort from opponents. The Raptors are leading the league in fast break points, and now that he's getting more minutes, Grady will only add to that. When it comes to shot creation and playmaking, Grady has a long way to go, but he's shown potential. While his handle needs work, he can take advantage when he has a lane to the basket. There's still times where he's a bit hesitant on drives, where he'll find himself caught in a difficult attempt, but I've seen him make enough strong drives to have faith in him. If you asked some shooters to put the ball on the floor and score at the rim, they wouldn't find much success. I don't expect Grady to become an elite finisher at the basket, but with some more polish and reps, he can become good in that area. Because he's not someone that's going to break you down off the dribble, you're not expecting Grady to collapse the defense and set up his teammates. However, he's able to recognize the open man and make the right pass within the flow of the offense. Even though most of his assists come off simple passes, he's shown the ability to make some higher degree of difficulty passes in tight windows. If he can improve his handle and become more dangerous off the bounce, he could be a reliable passer. On the defensive end, this is where Grady struggles the most. On this play, he switches onto Sadiq Bey, but Bey is able to easily overpower him and get the and one. Right here, he's matched up against Brunson on the perimeter, but he allows Brunson to attack his top foot, and he doesn't have the lateral quickness to recover. Even though there's room for improvement, I like the effort he plays with. Against the Clippers, Grady hustles to switch onto Tice, and when the three goes up, he boxes out the bigger man and grabs the rebound. He has good instincts as well, and he's able to deflect passes and force turnovers, which leads to transition opportunities for his team. In college, he averaged 1.4 steals per game, and as a rookie, he's averaging 1.2 steals per 36 minutes. His effort and hustle are impressive, but what I like most about Grady is his willingness to sacrifice for the team. On the year, Grady has taken 5 charges, which may not sound like a lot, but considering he's played just 34 games, many of which being short spurts and garbage time, that number sounds a lot better. He actively tries to take charges each game, and I expect him to be one of the league leaders in that category for many years. While I don't think he'll ever be a great individual defender, Grady has shown that he can be an impactful team defender, and that's all you need from him. As you can see, Grady Dick is more than just a shooter. Obviously, that is his calling card, but he's shown flashes as a finisher, playmaker, and team defender that have me excited about his future. He's a different player than he was at the start of the season, and with the trades Toronto has made, there's been more opportunities for him to show that. At the very least, I see Grady becoming a valuable rotation player that provides great shooting and contributions in other areas as well. Given that he's only 20 years old though, there's reason to believe he could become something more than that. Grady Dick is a prime example of why you need to be patient with young players, and for everyone that claimed Toronto made a mistake by drafting him, they're now being proven wrong. Anyways, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. With all that being said, I'm out, and I'll see you in the next video.